before the world got accustomed to these. And these, we used to use things that were a little bit different, but of course the older methods were not as precise. The thing is that while everyone remembers the beginning and the end, they often forget the journey or what happened in the middle. There is a reason why weapons got smarter, and that was really because of the walleye, the first TV guided bomb. It shouldn't be surprising during the first television war, aka Vietnam, television technology helped to create a new set of weapons called precision guided munitions, and this is how they worked. Perfecting a targeting scheme and a method for defining the target within the TV picture were the final keys to the guidance system. If you look at something, you see that by contrast. Everything in your field of view you, you see because of a contrast between that object and its surroundings. And so you look at the television signal, and the signal is nothing but a signal representing uh, how bright or dim a spot is in the scene. And uh, what we did was take that signal and differentiate it. Differentiating gives you the rate of change of the signal. and. Uh, that's essentially the contrast at that point. And we rectified it so that it didn't matter whether it was a positive or a negative contrast. Being able to enter a specific period of time in the past and work within those limitations is what makes simulators really interesting. And that is what we are going to do today. In this video, we are learning how to use the TV guided bombs on Heepler's F4E Phantom 2. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, please subscribe. We went back again. In that time, the defenses, the weather was perfect. The defenses were marginal. They didn't fire more than half a dozen SAMs at us in the whole trip. We saw no MIGs and we put four into the uh, two into the boiler house, two into the generator hall, and shut the plant down, which made, pretty much made headlines throughout the country that the city of Hanoi was without, without uh, water and power uh, because of a strike in, in the power plant. So that one was a great success, and I probably made the walleye what it later became. I mean, it, it was proven at that point. First things first, we will start this off by confirming what do we mean by TV guided bombs. We have the GBU-8 homing bomb system, or HOBOS, the AGM-62 Walleye, and the Walleye 2. Employing these weapons are all the exact same. So if you know how to use one, then you know how to use all of them. There are just some slight differences with the history of each weapon. It helps to better understand the history of these things. The Navy started off with the Walleye 1. The claim to fame for this bomb is its targeting and guidance system. The Air Force found success with it, but wanted a larger bomb, so they took the same targeting and guidance system and strapped it onto the 2,000 pound Mark 84 bomb. The Navy then later went back and decided to up the Walleye to the Walleye 2, which also had a similar payload to the GBU-8 or the Hobos. Outside of the pylon restrictions, the size of the weapons, and the history around each one, there is no real difference in employing them. So pick your poison. Now that we have defined what they are and how many we can take, we can get into the actual employment. All right, let's start this off by getting our plane ready. The first thing to note is that we are starting this as an air spawn. So because of that, the weapon selector knob is already set to TV. If this was a ground spawn, this would not be on TV, and then we have to turn it to it, okay? So we would turn this to TV and then start the timer, and in three minutes, the weapons would be warmed up and ready. From there, we move the delivery to direct, and then what we will do is change our gun sight from air to air to air to ground, and then we will drop the mills up to 17. Now, when we do this, what we're doing is we're changing the elevation of the air to ground gun sight. So it basically matches closer to where the seeker heads are looking at. And that way you can use your gun sight to better inform, you know, what, if you're looking in the right direction or not. Once you have done this, go ahead and go master arm on and you can turn your pylons on. And you'll notice that the outside pylons have the, have arm on. 
again, we started in the air, so everything had already warmed up. Uh, because three minutes had has not gone by yet, they shouldn't say arm yet. Uh, if we would have turned on to TV for the very first time, they would be warming up, and after three minutes, then you would see arm. So now that we have done this, we're ready to go, more or less. We have four Sidewinders and two GBU-8s. And the only other last thing that we need to do is to turn our fishbowl from radar onto TV. And now we're seeing what the secret heads are seeing. We are now ready to talk about deploying the weapon. Do not be deceived by the AGM name and how these are located in the air -to missile category in DCS. These are not missiles, they are bombs with TV guidance. Imagine they are Mavericks without a motor. If you think more bomb and less missile, then you will have more success with these. They are really easy to screw up, but that's what makes it so satisfying when you do connect with them. Here's a picture from a real life F4 manual that lays it out. The delivery breaks down into four parts and please note the steepness of the dive angle. They are much easier to connect with when you dive bomb. Part one, prepare your delivery with the right clicky clicky. We have already figured this out. Part two, identify what you want to hit as you dive in toward the target area. This means you should have altitude. Part three, center the crosshair over the target. Part four, confirm, lock on, and keep it centered. Part five, release and pull away. To illustrate how easy it is to screw it up and also to go over some key maps, I will show some bad examples before we jump into a good one. We start this off looking for a target and then we are going to go ahead and lock and you'll see, I just paused it, but the cursor crosshair is not gonna move anymore from here. So we know we're locked now. And from there, you'll see that as I pulled up, a black box appeared and I'm gonna zoom it in. And this black box basically tells you how much more your seeker head can go before it can't see the target anymore. Basically, it's telling you you're not on target because the black box is so far away from the center. So now the seeker head is basically looking up way above the target. I let go of the bomb and we're gonna see that it's gonna complete completely sail over target and that's because I was not flying or diving toward the target and the black box made that very very obvious. So the lesson here is really drive or fly the missile toward the target or rather at the target. Now we're going to do a good example and I'm going to fly through the process just to kind of show how quickly it can be done especially with so little key mapping. So with this out of the way we're going to go ahead and start looking for targets. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet which is really important is you do not get any ranging information uh, with using TV guided point. bombs. So you're gonna to have to really eyeball everything. But the good thing is, is that if you can keep the seeker head on the target, which I am now doing now, because you can see that black box is kind of disappearing. If all I need to do now is just get in the range. And what I've been using in my practice is as soon as the enemy fires, I pretty much go ahead and drop the missile, oh, drop the bomb, excuse me and just have to make sure that I don't roll over and crash because there's a lot of weight coming off. And as you can see, the uh, bomb has hit. Now, these things are a little bit tricky. You can only drop one at a time because the seeker head has to lock on. But as you can see right here, it will hit if you're close enough and if you're really driving the seeker head toward the target. I hope everyone found this video not just helpful from a guide perspective, but also interesting from a history perspective. I feel like half the reason why I make guides for YouTube is because I have to go a layer deeper and try to get the background on why these systems came to be. So it was really neat to learn about the TV guided bombs. If you want to learn more, I would really recommend The Pursuit of Precision. It is a documentary dedicated on the walleye. I will link it in the comments. If you found this video helpful or if you want to help, then please subscribe and leave a comment. It's the best way to help me and I actually do read every single comment. Thank you.